I'm Dave Mays, and this is Collect Call with Suge Knight. What you're about to hear are conversations, raw and uncut, with the legendary founder of Death Row Records. He's currently serving a 28-year sentence in California State Prison. His honesty, vulnerability, and current state of mind will all be heard in this groundbreaking podcast series, featuring conversations with me and many other guests who have agreed to accept Suge's Collect Call. Suge will be putting periods to all question marks while answering everything hip-hop fans worldwide want to know. History will be made and documented in real time, each week on Collect Call with Suge Knight. Suge and I both want to hear from you, so if you have any questions or input, please be sure to contact us at Breakbeat Media, authentically hip-hop. Welcome to Collect Call with Suge Knight. You know, I'm having a good day. All my days is great. But what makes today so special, I'm only enjoying some double strawberry ice cream. You know, a lot of times, or lately, sometimes people say, you know, on your platform, you use to try to educate somebody, help someone. But that's not always what people want to hear. I say, well, if I can change somebody's life and help somebody in business or in life, their journey, I don't care if it's one person or only 10 people. I rather have 10 people and only have 20 people listening to me than have a million people listening to me and never have one person on something positive that's leading me to darkness to failure. I know what it is to grow up hard. I know what it is to grow up with love. But I do know because I've been through it. My mother was a woman that wanted to help everyone and to love everyone and say, well, if a person needs something and even she didn't know him, she said, that might be Jesus taking, uh, you know, testing your, your faith. I understood what that means. So that credit goes to my mother when I try to help people or help people. I remember when I was watching E.T. And Hammer is more than a friend to me. That's family. <clears throat> so I'm watching B.E.T. I see Hammer doing an interview. No cheery on, not shining like he usually shines, and not as cocky as he usually be. This my friend. I could tell something's wrong. So I was at the studio watching the BET. I immediately got hammer on the phone. I immediately got hammer to Los Angeles. They pick have a car picking hammer up, bring him by the studio, and we dive right in. <clears throat> and at that time, Hammer had gave his, all his jury up to a man for money in cars. I didn't judge him, that's my brother. I immediately went with him and paid to get his jury back. Gave him bread and he bought a Hummer and a Rolls Royce. Got him a place in Los Angeles, Westwood to be exact. High rise next to me over here by me and Pac. I talked to Pop. I never met a person is so genuine in Tupac. He became my little brother. We had a pack. Try to change the world for our people. So look, man, Hammer going through some shit. We're going to work on Hammer. 
That's man, I'll be honest with you, I ain't never liked it. I'm a real rapper. I ain't like hammer shit. Oh, let's get it started and all that dancing. Yo, let me bust the uh, it's bigger than that. If you want to do it, I'm going to do it. That's why I want you to write for him and record some stuff for him. We're all going to you know, make it work for him. So I bring Hammer in and talk to me and Pac. Hammer wanted to do some pretty much shoot him up, bang, bang. Pac was last night too. So one of the songs Pac did for him was, he said, look, I'm going to write a song for you. But it's going to be a realistic song. He said, now I can't write this song because I don't have no wife I've been with. I don't have any kids. I don't have, I'm not in love. I don't, I don't love him. And he started laughing, so his money in the business. So he told Hammer, but you in love and you married. So Pac did a song for Hammer called Unconditional Love. And Pac was like, I want to put this song out for me, but I'm going to record it. And you take the, you know, the CD and you learn it. And once you learn it, we lay the vocals down. So that song that you heard on the radio or they put out when I was in prison with Pac singing Unconditional Love, that was Hammer's song. When I went to prison, Hammer came to the studio. And you gotta remember, the studio costs a lot of money. Engineers, round the clock. Runners, security. Eat whatever you wanna eat. Drink whatever you wanna drink. Whatever you need, I'm putting the bill for. That's important because when you're in the studio and working, the last thing you wanna do is feel somebody gonna come there and rob you. I kept everything safe. Not just with the present, but also with my bread. When I was in prison, Hammer came in and stole all the reels, even Pac verses. I wasn't gonna say nothing bad about him, say, fuck you, Hammer. I'm gonna get at Hammer like I would get at a, another I'm gonna get at Hammer with love and respect because that's still my brother no matter what. So, did Hammer fuck over me? He did. But it's okay. Yeah, every talked to him. He was like, "Look, man, you know, you got some Tupac songs up along to you, you know that shit stuff, and you got a whole bunch of stuff you stole. We want to do some, so we want to be able to get the real you got." And he said, "Have to stop taking his calls." The sad thing about it, the people who got those reels, they got stolen reels because they was in the storage. And Hammer didn't pay the $100, so they got it. Do I hold anything against Hammer? Never, uh, never. That's just the way it goes, that's the way it is. Yeah, I sat in the prime time. Yeah, I wanted to do an album, and I said this before. I spent probably a half a million dollars, easily, maybe more. Riders, putting people in the hotels, studio, paying for everything. They even get the, the Clack Code commercial of the song I paid for it on the publishers. Must be the money. But the health insurance in Afflight is money. Must be the money. Must be money. Not only did I not get a dollar out of it, I never even got the money I paid to make this guy a dream come true. Hammer wanted some things done, I'm not gonna say, cause I don't wanna put that. It's true, but I'm not gonna go in there. But I paid to get it done, he never reimbursed me back. When the guys ended up going there, Jail and prison behind him and them. I paid for that. Looked out for that dude. Or he don't get in trouble. I asked this dude one day. Look, man, you owe me. What's up? That was that. Somebody growing up and was on. Actually, me and Nick was talking. After we finished having the conversation, Beyond goes and tell people he paid me back. Where's the check? He never paid me back. But what's so bad about all this? It's okay somebody do something to you the wrong way and steal from you you got your money it's different if one of these guys stole from you don't have the money to give it back to you I can understand that 
So if Dion owe me five dollars and he really don't have the money to give me my five dollars back, I can respect that. But if you owe me five dollars because you stole from five dollars from me and you got a hundred dollars from my five dollars back, people would rather pay more money for security or watch look over their shoulders than doing the right thing. But then when you do the right thing to get what belongs to you, they really want to put you in prison or call yourself blackballing you that racist term. I'll make you out to be a bad person. Before you judge, look at the whole picture. I used to have so many automatic withdrawals coming out of my account for subscriptions that I didn't even realize I had. Most of you can probably relate to that, but I was looking over my credit card statement recently and saw all these deductions that were adding up every month. And that's when I started using Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills. I can see all my subscriptions in one place. If I see something I don't want, I can cancel it with the tap. I never have to get on the phone with customer service. They'll even try to get you a refund for the last couple months of wasted money and negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is take a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. So stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash suge. That's rocketmoney.com slash suge. Rocketmoney.com slash S-U-G-E. Are you tired of the constant what should we have for dinner dilemma? I know I am, especially since my fiance Brett and I have very different dietary preferences. As a vegan, I often find myself tasked with deciding on two separate meals each night, which usually ends up being takeout. It's a convenient but unsatisfying and expensive way to go. Lately, however, Home Chef has been the better solution. If you're anything like us and looking for a more enjoyable and cost-effective way to have home-cooked meals without the stress of planning, I think you'll enjoy Home Chef too. One of the best things about Home Chef is its extensive variety. With over 30 options a week and a commitment to serving various dietary needs, you can find something that suits your taste and all your family members. The ordering process is simple, delivery is speedy, and the cooking instructions are easy to follow. Brett lives for Mexican food, and so far, she absolutely loves the one-pan turkey burrito skillet. She always upgrades to ground beef for, as she calls it, an extra flair. So for a limited time, Home Chef is offering my listeners 18 free meals plus free dessert for life. And of course, free shipping on your first box. Go to homechef.com slash suge. That's homechef.com slash suge for 18 free meals and free dessert for life. Homechef.com slash suge. Must be an active subscriber to receive free dessert. You made me free. Did not have Bow Wow signed. I had Bow Wow, respect the shit out of Bow Wow's mother, and little Bow Wow, especially his mother. It was a woman who wanted something great for her son. I talked to her and I had her dream come true. I moved him to California, put him in a condo in Brentwood, gave him a monthly car, paid for everything, and had a deal with him. When I went to prison, Snoop stole from me by taking Bow Wow family to do to do a deal with Jermaine Dupree. Now, I ain't looking nothing from no money out of Bow Wow or Bow Wow's mother, but Jermaine Dupree. If I treat you like the white people treated you, I'd have sued you and you'd owe me three times a month. You had your opportunity to pay me. One time I caught you. All other time you dip out and run. Everybody want to play this tough role and all this tough shit. I don't care about all that, but I care about the truth. I came right by, I was going to Subway, use this Starbucks, get some coffee. Caught you. Only thing you had in your hand was two coffee cups, saying you was taking that to Janet. And I had everything I both had with me, meaning what I have. 
Me I told you, little funny. Where's my money? You say you know you owe me. You called Joe Jackson. Joe Jackson spoke with me. Been knowing Joe Jackson a long time before he passed away. And have respect for Joe Jackson. Have respect for him then, have respect for him now. Joe Jackson pretty much begged me not to go with me. You know, I probably was wrong how I did it. You got on your knees, and I pour hot coffee on top of your head. If you want to, oh, that didn't happen. When I get home, we can do a reenacting of it. I play it by play, and I do it again. There ain't nothing to brag about, because you're a midget. I woke up today with a mess. And basically, a lot of people owe me a lot of money over here. And owe me my company back. And I ain't gonna stop till I get my shit back. It ain't from those other two guys who don't have it. We're talking about the people who have it. Now, message basically is this. Back in the day, in the 90s, they gave me a case I should have never got. They sent me to prison and I shouldn't have went. That's the past, can't do nothing about that. Gave me a violation, I shouldn't have got. But the message was this. Like those things were done to me then, certain things can be done to me now. I'm like this. If I can do things that make people learn from a good idea, people should be able to learn from mistakes I made also. But they don't like to make the same one. I'd rather tell the truth of God than lie for the devil. You know, I never I never hired any of my homies to do security. I knew most of them could do more than just be security. Hen dog, rest the peace, hen dog, one of my road dogs, he can draw better than anyone. That's who drew the death row logo. Yeah, I had a homie named Jake. We used to call him Big Jake. In West Side, me and Jake talking one day, and I know Jake was a D boy, and we, you know, we was bagging, shooting, jokes. I said, "Man, you a D boy with this racket car?" He said, "Man, I know, man. I keep going to prison." So I thought he was coming like, "Oh, it's my undercover." When I got the bins at the house, he's like, "Nah, I keep going to prison." I said, "That mean you ain't good at it." So what you need a job? He said, "Yeah, actually, yeah." I told him, well, "Look." Meet me at the office. That's where my office is in Westwood. At Westwood, you know. And uh, I start you off doing a street promotion. So you can do college radio. And once you learn college radio, you can start doing the, radio, the regular radio stations, you know. I'm just going to kick a little something. Everybody want to know why people bang, why people kill, why people do this, sell dope. And uh, you, you can't just look at the individuals because, you know, you have to look at the environment that they set in that... Uh, creates these conditions for them to have to live and do the things that they do. It's my name Rod. I said, see, you're a bad D-boy. So I pick him up with his office. Jake did a great job. He was doing incredible. So they had this domain free party in Atlanta. Everybody wanted to do these documentaries and rewrite history and lie and you know, this. That's not how it went. We went to the, the main pre party in Atlanta. It's supposed to be me, Jake. Well, actually, it was Jake and myself, and there's another person supposed to come, and he, he can carry his shit, but he missed his flight. So, anyway, we get there. We get the. Uh, party. We had a great time. Then we went to the after party. 
Anytime I go out of town, no matter where I, I would go, I would have a 24-hour car there waiting on taking from West be waiting on no cabs or no car service. We would get the memo right there. We get to the after party. We enjoying ourselves. I'm dancing with a... But I'm going to watch Jake because I'm quite sure Jake was watching me. You know, you come with somebody, you, you know, you keep your eyes on them and y'all come together, you lead together. I see Jake was having like a little aggressive conversation. So I go over, when I get there, I can hear the conversation. The, that the bartender, who was a bartender rather, gave Jake her number. The other fool was mad because he gave Jake the number. She gave Jake the number. So Jake was like, man, check it. But if you got a problem, we go in the restroom and run this fade. If you win, I'll shake your hand. If you won't win, I'm gonna beat your ass up because we can get it out the way. Before they can do that part, a real police officer in a real police uniform came and got on tape. Like, you know, like he was gonna get on him. So what you think you're doing? I said, man, you touch the homie, we're gonna tear this motherfucker up. He said, well, I gotta throw him out. I said, for what? He said, he was uh, Puffy and Jermaine Dupri. So, bam, I said, he go, I go. So when we get outside, Jake still want to run his stage, you know? Somebody passed somebody something, started shooting. Police went after the motherfucker who was shooting. I ended up doing what I was doing to the motherfucker who was out there. So when the ambulance came, I said what I said, did what I did, the ambulance came, and we followed them. Police. They used to look out up to the hospital. That fool know what happened when he got there. So then they came and tried to take me to the station. So I ain't riding no police car, I ain't on the rest of you gotta come. So I hopped in the limo, went to the station. When I got there, that same police officer in the uniform was giving a statement of exactly what happened. He looked at me and said, what you see? I said, I didn't see shit. I'm gonna get back to the hospital. But the crazy thing about it, the police dude was like, hey, are you going to, you know, deal with that? They tell him, no, the person who gave the party and the people he's talking about, they basically, they good with them. No big deal. When Jake finally passed away, we come back. We're in the office. The office is in Westwood. In the scope office is right across the hall. I walked in Jimmy's office. I didn't have to knock on the door or get somebody that know let Jimmy you know Mr. Knight that walk right in. He do the same. Anyway, when he walked in my office, we was having a conversation. He overheard somebody say something he probably shouldn't have heard. He wanted to holler at me. So I said the homies give me a minute. Jimmy said, Man, I'm here because Clyde Davis called me and him and Puppy is real tight and uh, you know, lovers. So I thought he was talking about like they got love for each other. All right, he said, yeah, they are lovers. I said, well, why do you keep saying that? I said, look, all these, you saying they lovers like they, they're sucking? He said, I don't want to say that, but that's what it means, right? I said, okay. He said, Clyde don't want them to happen to put. He said, but this guy ain't going to be able to do shit in his business because we know what he did, what they did. So I go to prison. Come back out from prison, and later on the move, Ahead, Puffy did a deal with Universal. He did that deal with Universal. Universal owns Interscope, so it's Jimmy and Doug Morris. They gave him a lot of money. They said they never recouped their money. In other words, they didn't make their money back. Usually, when you don't make your money back, either they drop your note, they don't give you any money to recoup. Jimmy signed him and gave him fresh new money, which is unheard of. I was thinking like a lot of shit goes on, but that's that secret society. Now, I'm gonna show you how deep this goes. They, they committed fraud against me, exact deck against me to beat me on my or take orders from me, right? But when you look at it, Jimmy Iveen produced an album called Easter by an artist named Patty Smith. And some of the lyrics was, Babies are black sheep. 
This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Baby, it is it's a rock and roll, not right? Baby, baby, baby was a rock and roll nigga. And it says, Jimmy Hendrix is a rock and roll nigga. I gotta remember how they say it. Jesus. I'm talking about the Son of God, Jesus, is the They put this album out. They put this album out. They can tell me. I can't put out, they can't just give me my stuff no more because they never put out records where people curse or disrespect women. But that's what they, that's what kids they recognize. <laughs> Hey, it's Dave Mays from Collect Call with Suge Knight. Here's a lowdown on Prize Picks, the go-to for daily fantasy sports. It's shaking up how we enjoy and interact with the games we love. Football's done, but basketball's where it's at, full of edge-of-your-seat action. Prize Picks lets you use your sports smarts to turn predictions into cash. Think you've got the skills? Prove it. With prize picks, $10 could become 1000 with just four smart picks across the NBA, NHL, or college basketball. It's you against the stats. No massive competition, just your choices. Check this. I bet on Steph Curry to score over 29 points last game, and he delivered. That's the buzz of prize picks. Testing your sports knowledge and making it count. So download the app today and use code SUG for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Download the Prize Picks app today and use code SUG for a first deposit match up to $100. Don't miss out. Lead the charge. Share your wins and tag at Prize Picks. Let's earn together. Peace. Where do we go with this? Reggie Bush is for him at USC. OJ at USC. There's a lot more. And I'm not saying. I'm not judging OJ. He was acquitted. Where he they said he didn't do the murder, he wasn't guilty. But they messed over him. But they can have Andre, who beat the shit out of women of beer, and Jimmy Iovine, and on a music uh, building is Jimmy Iovine and Andre Young. Where do we go from this? Man, we should turn around and be some Bruins fans and support UCLA. Because SC is full of Now, they always say it's not racist. But if it's not racist, what is it? Just as like, a guy was getting $1,000 a month doing internet stuff. He never met him. Never met him. Never met him in my life. But everybody said he could call him John the Racist. That would make me start paying attention. I have a racist white guy working for me to have anything to do with me. This same guy so two pot unreleased worth all the money in the world prices and was selling to Japan or China or whatever the case may be and do a show they call Bomb First named after two pot. This same guy sold a, a death row chain to this guy and these jewelers and they asked you know, he gave him $40,000 for it. And when John sold it to him, John the racist told him, it was my homie Tehran. Tehran's my homie. That's the piece, Tehran. And this is what Suge taught me. Yeah. I ain't never had a job before in my life until I started working That's for Suge. Always miss you. You know, person's always miss. But at the same time, he said that the that was the chain heroin was wearing when he got killed. So he sold it to the guy for forty thousand dollars. I never gave John a death row chain or none of these other guys. But it's okay to make money off black people and don't like black people because uh, nobody cares about black people. Now, if that was if the roles was reversed, it'd be a serious problem. They're constantly taken from it and destroying the culture. When you fight for it, they try to put cuffs on you. They have guys of other platforms who are not even from this country. 
and talk about nothing but black people and let black people fight each other in hip hop. Because the more we get into it and tearing each other down, hip hop is pretty much like it's over. Where's the money being made? See, at the same time, if you got apples spraying your stuff, who policing second apple? I say it all the time. If it's 20, 20 strings come in, who, how you know if they're giving you two and giving themselves 18? We don't. That's why we need that union. That's why we need to be given time for us and doing stuff to make this union. But it's always the same thing as divide and conquer. They always get to use, it's like when the slaves, the slaves didn't grab the, you know, the Africans and bring them out here. Africans grab them and bring them out here. We could talk about that forever. At the same time, it's time. I'm willing to stand up like I've always been standing up. Everybody always got something to say. You know, I ain't gonna say names, but people talking about they got death row here. Yeah, they homies calling in the mother weirdos in the camp. The tin man and the scarecrow know exactly what I'm talking about. I have something for you guys. From official Shug Knight Instagram. And I could be saying it wrong, but my son the one runs it. If it is here, then put it on a thing that you know you get the right one. I have some incredible shirts for you guys. Death Row is something I started in 1991. Tupac passed away in 96. By the time 97 rolled around, I was in prison doing time. After Pac passed away, I was in prison. Death Row, the untouchable Death Row, the company. Death Row was on life support. Breathing by machine. When I paroled in in 2001, they're letting Death Row suffer by some idiots start messing it up. I pulled the plug. Anything after that is fake, lies, and it's the cops. 